Hello Rickenbacker enthusiasts, it's Steve the Rickaholic and welcome to our first ever Rickenbacker Anonymous Extra feature. This is where I take a look at a piece of gear and uh, talk a bit about it, something that has me excited. Uh, if you, sorry I'm shaking so much, uh, if you clicked on my clickbait you saw the tagline of turn virtually any amp into a Vox for $100 and that's not really uh, a lot of hyperbole. Um, this this product actually does a pretty good job of just that. And I'll show it to you right off. This is called the Moore 004 Day Tripper pedal. This is actually a preamp in a miniature sized pedal. Uh, this is, what is this, three three inches long? It's, it's a little tiny thing. It's nowhere near the size of a Boss pedal, for instance. Uh, and this will, as I mentioned, it'll, it'll make practically any amplifier sound like a Vox, or at least passably like a Vox. Uh, I think you'll be excited about it. I know I am. So if that's something that interests you, stay tuned. Um, I do believe I gave $100 for that. I don't recall if that was with or without shipping, but I'll find the best deal that I can on it and post it in the show notes in case you want one yourself. And uh, without any further ado, I'll give you a chance to hear that as well as my 1967 Rickenbacker 420 former lefty that I featured in the last episode. The main comment that I heard from people was, let's hear that darn thing. So we're going to hear just a little bit of it coming up. So stay tuned. Thanks. So what this product I want to talk to you about is, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's called the 004 Moore Day Tripper pedal. It's supposed to be an AC30 preamp in a miniature pedal sized box. And that's basically exactly what it is. Um, most of we Rickenbacker enthusiasts are also Vox enthusiasts because many of us are right here via the Beatles and the British Invasion Bands. They, for the most part, all use Voxes, at least at some point, largely because they were readily available and relatively inexpensive in Great Britain versus like the cost of having a, a fender shipped over with the value-added taxes and whatever else, duties. So those are the sounds we grew up with, listening to the Beatles and, uh, and whatnot. Unless uh, you started with, let's say, the birds, the birds were on the west coast of the United States. They had ready, readily accessible Fender amplifiers, which they used to great effect with their Rickenbackers and Gretches. And um, that's basically that's the tone that I'm working with right here, right now. It's a great tone, love it to pieces, and I, I use it a lot. And uh, it's, it's my go-to. It's like I said, the, the Fender Deluxe Reverb Tone Master, which is the solid state version of the Deluxe Reverb. I've, I've listened to them back to back with the, uh, the real two versions, and I, I couldn't, couldn't find a difference for you. But now it's interesting. Voxy tone. It takes on the character of the box. It's not just changing the EQ because I bought this 10 band EQ pedal as a boost, but I spent some time trying to replicate the exact same effect that this Day Tripper pedal is giving me using nothing but this EQ box, and it can't be done. I'm not exactly sure what these uh, engineers at Moore did or are doing, but it really works, and uh, it's a great little pedal. And uh, it has two modes, which are interesting. Uh, you can use it the way I am, where it's, you know, either your amp or your amp plus the pedal. But it also has a separate mode. You hold down the button and uh, then you have a blue and a red mode. In the blue mode, you're a nice clean AC30. And in red mode, an overdriven AC30 with individual levels for each, individual EQs for each. And uh, so that's a neat thing as well. Uh, another application for this pedal, if you weren't just trying to get the box sound as well as your sound out of an amp, if you wanted to use this as if your full-time uh, preamp, let's say you had an amp that the sound didn't excite you. Let's say you've got something solid state, something like a, I've got a Dean Markley back here, for instance, 
It's not a terribly exciting amp. I've got my lunchbox combo amp, which is an amazing 100 watt little piece of electronics, only this big, that's great for the stage, but kind of soulless. Uh, this does a good job of turning that into a usable amp. But what I was going to say is, you can bypass the front end of any amp with an effects loop and plug this thing directly into the effects return of the effects end, thereby bypassing the internal preamp and the amplifier just using the power section. And in that case, you could use the dual mode on this pedal to switch back and forth between a clean AC30 and a dirty AC30, which is actually a very cool thing uh, in and of itself. So anyway, so what I was trying to get at here, our AC30 tone. It's got the chime and, and that, that elusive something. I turn the pedal off and we're back to Fender sound. Which is great in its own right, but when you want that Vox sound, at least in the past, it's easy to say nothing else would do. And now, do I know what I'm talking about? Have I had Vox amps? Yes, indeed. Uh, back in the 90s, I had an AC30 reissue with the, uh, Al, the Al Nico Blue speakers. Cost me a small fortune. Uh, fun story, it was bought with the proceeds from uh, an insurance settlement from a car accident I was in. And then sold to pay off some <laughs> outstanding debts in a great loss later. But just recently, earlier this year, in fact, it was my birthday, February 8th this year, I had a Vox AC15 CC1 that I was using for gigs with my cover band Raygun. I took it to a gig in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, after lugging it up two flights of steps, I said, I'm not doing this anymore. It was just too much weight, too much trouble. That's why I wound up getting this Tone Master amp. It's 22 pounds. So I do know what a Vox should sound like. And indeed, this is very much the sound. <laughs> It sounds wonderful. Uh, does it take pedals? Sure it takes pedals. Here's my drive. it's as close to a no-brainer uh, of a pedal as, as you could ask for. It works a little better um, with two amps than with solid state, but it does do a nice job with a solid state amp, especially, and now this, I can't stress this enough, if you happen to have something from the Roland JC series, a Roland JC 120, 77, 55, even down to the 22, which I'm actively seeking one of myself, because they make great little gigging amps, um, you haven't lived until you've heard Vox Chime followed with Roland Chorus. And I'm not just talking the pedal, I'm talking that beautiful lush stereo chorus that's built into the JC series amplifiers. Hit that with this beautiful Vox Chime. It's, it's, I'll overdo it, I'll say it's life changing. Maybe it's not life changing, but it's certainly enough to put a big smile on your face as it did me. Um, <laughs> Wonderful pedal, wonderful guitar by the way, in case any of you had uh, wondered, in case any of you had wondered, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, I put on some enormous knobs that uh, I found on a, an antique direct box, and I like them. They're not quite TV knobs, but they have their own character, and let's face it, everything about this guitar is all about having <laughs> its own character. So, you got to hear a little bit of this. Um, darn well want to. So anyway, that's all I wanted to do is share this with you. Um, 
I'm excited about finding this pedal. I think some of you out there will be excited as well. It does great things. If you don't have a Vox, it gives you the Vox sound, the touch of a button. If you've got a Vox, it gives you a killer overdrive. It's just a cool pedal. And for $100, what else are you going to do? Buy uh, uh, 15 lattes or something, or uh, uh, another bad boss pedal that you don't need? I mean, this thing actually does something that's usable. Uh, and if you're a person that wants to use it as your main sound, it could be just that. It could be your full-time, your, your Vox in a box that you could couple with virtually anything that has a power section. The, this isn't technically an episode. This is what we like to call a Rickenbacker Anonymous Extra. Okay? In the next Extra, I'm going to be telling you how you can get around spending $300 plus on a Jangle Box. Um, I've got a Jangle Box JB3 here. Uh, full disclosure, I paid a little less than half retail for it because I bought it used, although you'd never know it was used to look at it. It came in the box and everything. But a way that you can get 80% of the experience of the Jangle Box compression. Now, never mind the, 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 the top boost side. I'm just talking about the compression itself for $50 or less. Uh, and uh, we're going to go into that. And so in the meanwhile, like this episode, subscribe. Hit the bell, tell a friend, tell an enemy, uh, tell anybody, tell everybody. Uh, send us some pictures. Go to the Facebook page, Rickenbacker Anonymous. Go to uh, my personal website, steverempis.com. Go to any of the links that I'm going to put underneath in the show notes or how you can uh, contact me. And uh, if you're going to go to the Facebook, send us some pictures of yourself and your Ricks and or. Uh, we want to see your guitars, we want to see you with them, we want to see you rocking out, uh, having a good time, and chiming on, because that's what it's all about.